Okay, so today's lesson is looking at associations still, but this time associations between a categorical and a numerical variable. So we also want to think about the different ways that we might represent um, uh, data where we have one numerical variable and one categorical variable. So one example might be to use parallel box plots. So in this first um, diagram you're seeing here on the right, we have four Year 7 classes at Western Secondary College completed the same end of year maths exam. The distributions of the percentage marks for each class are shown in the parallel box plot opposite. So our two variables are one categorical um, class, school class, 7A, 7B, 7C, 7D, and the other numerical, the mark on the exam. Um, we can identify an association between the variables in a parallel box plot, or in fact in any um, distribution if we can observe significant differences in the in the median. So again, um, it's about looking for difference, not the same thing. So we can see an association if we're seeing differences. If we saw that every single class had the same median, then there's no suggestion that the test results are associated with which class the students are in. Whereas if one class is performing much better than another class, or vice versa, um, then there is a suggestion that um, the class that they're in has some kind of effect on their um, result, on their mark. Or well, there's certainly an association between those two variables anyway. Um, so we would usually, we're looking for difference. We can look for difference in different measures, but usually we're trying to look for a difference in the median. That's sort of the most um, robust measure of an association. Um, so for example, in this, set, in this case, we might say something like um, the median mark scored on the exam varies significantly from 61% in, seven, in 7A to 79% in 7B. And we would go on therefore to say, and so therefore um, th there appears to be, the data appears to show an association between school class and exam mark. We can also identify an association based on significant differences in the range or the interquartile range or even the shape of the distribution. So we could also say, um, you know, the range of scores on the exam varies from 40% 7B and 7C to 50% 7A and 7D. We could use that to cite an association. We could say the interquartile range is about 20% in 7A, 7B and 7C but is closer to 30% in 7D. Again, looking for difference to cite an association. Um, or we could say that the shape of the distributions of marks in all four classes is roughly symmetric, although um, the marks in 7C have a slight negative skew and the marks in 7B have a slight positive skew. Um, I'd say there's probably not a lot different there to be citing an association um, based on shape. Um, however, I want you to remember that really when you're asked these questions, you're really looking to make comparison of the median. Um, that's the, the default measure that you want to, to be able to, to note difference in the median to um, claim an association. Okay, let's have a look at um, another representation. We could use parallel dot plots. Um, now they can be drawn like this with two dot plots, one above the other. Obviously for them to be comparable, they need to use the same scale. Um, you can also do the dot plot with the dots going um, above and below and just the one scale. Um, but sometimes that can look a bit skewed because of the numbers on one side. So it's a bit about how you present that, but you will see those sometimes. Okay, so here we have um, parallel dot plots displaying the distribution of the number of sit-ups performed by 15 people before and after they'd completed a gym program. Okay, so we want do the parallel box plots support the contention that the number of sit-ups performed is associated with completing the gym program? We want to write a brief explanation that compares medians. Okay, so if we need to compare medians, we first need to calculate medians. So we have, um, sorry, we have 15 people here. Oh, <laughs> there we go, draw again. We have 15 people, so 15 data points therefore. So the median will be the, so we add one and divide by two, so it'll be the eighth data point will be the median. Okay, so we're going to then look at our dots. Let's count along. Sorry, just let me adjust my pen slightly. Okay, let's count along and we've got one, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So that's the eighth data point at 32. In the other dot plot, we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay, so there's the eighth data point in the um, first, well, the pre-gym dot plot. Okay, so we see our median number of sit-ups before the gym, 
is 26. Our median number of sit-ups after completing the gym program is 32. So definitely a significant difference and so therefore we can um, cite that, that there's an, there seems to be an association here. Okay, so we might say um, the median number of sit-ups completed before the gym program was 26. After completing the program, I might say the gym program, um, the participants were able to complete a median number of 32 sit-ups. This significant improvement suggests an association between um, completion of the gym program and number of sit-ups completed. Okay again, so you're looking to compare the medians, actually quoting statistics, so giving the median values, and then uh, make a statement about what that means, about can you um, suggest there might be an association or is it unclear? Okay, let's look at one more example. So again, another representation when we have one categorical variable and um, one numerical variable is to use a back-to-back -back stem plot. So obviously the back-to-back -back stem plot is limited in that we can only have two categories, um, otherwise we just don't have another direction to run the stem plot from. So two categories here, two different years, two different time periods. Um, and then we're looking at um, a, a life expectancy in each of the 13 countries in these two different years. Okay, so do the back-to-back -to -back stem plots support the contention that life expectancy is increasing over time? Write a brief explanation based on comparison of the two medians. So again, we want to calculate the medians. We've got 13 countries um, listed here. So the median, add one and divide it by two, will be the seventh data point. Okay, so again, for working out which one's the seventh, so in 2010, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So 46 is the median. Um, and for 1970, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So 67 is the median. Okay, so um, we clearly have, oh, sorry, it's 46, <laughs> 76. Sorry, I read the number next to it, not the stem. Or maybe I read this number on the left side of the stem plot. Anyway, sorry, so the stem is um, 7. So 76 is the median life expectancy in these 13 countries in 2010, and it was only 67 in 1970. So I think on that basis we can make a statement suggesting there seems to be an association. So um, maybe in 1970, uh, the median life expectancy was 67 years. In 2010, this had improved to 76 years. This significant difference in median 
in median life expectancy. Um, suggests suggests an association between year and um, life expectancy. Okay, so in terms of the representations, when we have one numerical variable and one categorical variable, we've seen parallel box plots, we've seen parallel dot plots and back-to-back -back stem plots. The limitation of a back-to-back -back stem plot is that we can only have two categorical variables, sorry, not two categorical variables, two categories within the categorical variable. Um, and also a stem plot is for, um, you know, discrete data really, um, or slightly different, but, but we'd have to work not for large sets of data, um, etc. Again, a dot plot's not really for large sets of data, so for small sets of data, we could potentially have more than two categories. We could just continue to stack dot plots um, one above the other, um, but again, it's important they have the same scale so that they're actually able to be compared. Um, and then we've also got the parallel box plots. Um, so parallel box plots, because we're using summary statistics there, that could be a large volume of data. Um, and again, we want to put them on the same scale, but we could have um, potentially, you know, we've got four um, categories in the categorical variable here. We could have um, as many as you want and just keep stacking uh, box plots here. So again, the key is you're looking for significant difference in the distributions of the, the different categories. Um, and the best way to cite that difference is to compare medians and to note a difference in the medians. Okay, time to get on with the work.